good evening everyone and welcome to another very interesting session of carwan and today we have a very special guest vikram vikram ji singh rupai he is he doesn't need an introduction but i think that is the social norms to introduce the guest so i'll i'll do the uh, the introduction he is a heritage activist and education consultant in a way and he is also an author and educator he is better known as the founder of india's largest heritage hobby club the heritage photography club and youth for heritage foundation he is also working to revolutionize history teaching at school level by his project heritage shala and he recently authored last year he authored a book called delhi heritage top 10 bowlies and he is currently working on his second book which is based on the forts of delhi so today we have vikram jeet to speak about some forts some known and some unknown forts of delhi so over to you vikram jeet ji thank you ishan thank you for having me and um, i have been watching carwan's journey it has been really amazing and exciting to see how you guys have pulled it up and how you guys have na- made a name for yourself um honored to be here glad uh, to be speaking to your audience and the topic that has been given to me today is forts so i'm going to talk about forts uh, but before i start my discussion because uh, you know uh, uh, when you know when me and ishan were talking we thought that we will uh, so many topics came to our mind and we thought okay why not forts let's talk about forts of delhi and uh, forts of delhi is something that i've been doing my research from last 8 9 years now so it's not difficult to talk about what what is challenging here is how do you define a fort what is the definition or what is the criteria of fort ek char diwari ban gayi is that a fort what purpose does it serve what is the difference between a fort and a palace because red fort the the, the building that we call a fort was actually a palace and if you uh, read books there's few books in which it is just mentioned as lal haveli molvi zafar hasan tak usko lal haveli ki tarike se naam se mention kar rahe so it is actually mentioned किला है मोहल्ला और लाल हवेली सो वट हैपन्स यू नो वेन यू ट्राई टू डिग डीपर इन टू दिस और ट्राई टू डिफाइन दिस होल वर्ल्ड द वर्ल्ड कम्स फ्रॉम लेटन फोर्टीज विच सिंपली मीन्स अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग फोर्टिफिकेशन और अ स्ट्रॉन्ग बाउंड्री टू प्रोटेक्ट समथिंग अगर मैं इस डेफिनेशन के साथ जाता हूं तो जितने भी शहर हैं हमारे पास शहरों की जो दीवारें हैं बिकॉज दिल्ली इज नॉट वन सिंगल सिटी वी गोट बिगर सिटीज वी गॉट स्मॉलर सिटीज विलेजेस खरेड़ा एक बहुत छोटा सा गांव हुआ करता था उसकी अपनी एक दीवार हुआ करती थी हॉस खास इंक्लेव में अगर आप जाए तो वहां पर उसका दीवार का छोटा सा टुकड़ा अभी भी बचा हुआ है राइट ऑपोजिट और मार्केट वेयर वी हैव दैट वन और प्रॉपर्टी ऑन द कॉर्नर बिटवीन द प्रॉपर्टी एंड द बैंक यू स्टिल हैव अस्टियन एंड पोर्शन ऑफ द वॉल रिमेनिंग सो दैट वॉल इज देयर देन देर आर फोर्ट्स you know so called forts like uh, kila kadam sharif now the now when we say kila kadam sharif it sounds like there must be some sort of fortification some sort of fort as of today just the tomb that was inside that fortification survives which is uh, 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 the the which it contains the tomb of uh, son of firoz shah tughlaq if i'm not wrong and also the uh, impression of the foot of prophet and that's how the it gets its name from 18 uh, late 1800s early 1900s we have got photograph from archaeological survey of india's photo archives where you see a very huge fortification something as grand you know at least in the picture it appears to be as grand as the old fort the purana kila kila kun of delhi if that enclosure was as big as that one then it should be i mean it was not as wide but the walls are as high the masonry uses as strong as that one so kila kadam sharif the word fits but then all the documentation says or various documents all they talk about is ki wahan par andar ek tomb banaya gaya tha which still exists so is kila kadam sharif the outer wall the gateways are all gone the, should it fall in the category of fort then there used to be a fort in the village of narayana in in western delhi when you cross dholla kuwa and you uh, re- proceed towards uh, rajouri garden or punjabi bag you cross this very long flyover which till um, i guess 10 years back was a nightmare for most of us 
I, I live in West Delhi and I used to work in Nehru place. So crossing that area was a nightmare until that flyover was inaugurated a decade, more than a decade back rather. And the, some old records suggest that even Narayana had a fort. And in till 1920s, uh, some pillars of that fort survived. And after that, all that is gone. So there uh, is some hill in Narayana. There is actually on that hill, there used to be a small fort. And this fort finds mention in the records of Tughlaq as well as Alauddin Khilji. So I was reading Tariq e Firoshai by Ziauddin Barni, where he says that there is a fort in Narayana, a small fortress in Narayana. And when the Mughals, so he uses the word Mughals, what he actually means is Mongols. And the word they're using is Mughal for them. That when Mongols attacked, uh, they were captured and they were all uh, captured in the fort of, uh, they were kept as prisoners in the fort of Narayana. And Muhammad bin Tughlaq sent a unit to the fort of Narayana where for a few days they did whatever atrocities they had to do. They killed every single prisoner they had. And from that hill, all you could see was rivers of blood flowing down. So that's how that place gets mentioned. Seri Fort becomes very famous, has always been very famous, though the wall properly does not survive, only in bits and pieces it survives. But Seri Fort uh, is actually a fortified city that uh, Alauddin Khilji built for, uh, <laughs> built as his new capital. And that is again when there was an attack and he had, he was not able to defend properly, but somehow he won that battle. Long story. Somehow he won the battle and then he realized that, okay, I need to build a better fortification. So he started repairing the old fort wall or the city wall, uh, the wall of the capital that was Kila Rai Pithora and Lal Kot, the Mehroli Ladosarai area. And he started also started building his new city, which as architects and archaeologists tell us is uh, the oldest oval uh, shaped city known to be built by any Muslim king. So he built that. Again, this name Siri becomes very interesting. Uh, I was reading in these records, again, Ziauddin Barni, who was 14 or 15 years old when uh, Alauddin Khilji became emperor. And Ziauddin Barni's father and uncle were appointed in the court. They, they were holding some respectable positions. So he was witnessing all the court affairs and accounts very closely. and. At many places, he has mentioned a village of Siri, which is outside uh, the capital of what now we know as uh, Lal Kot and Galarai Pithora. So he says outside the walls of the capital, there is this barren land known as Siri. And later, when the camp was made there to pr protect the city, Alauddin Khilji decided to create a permanent wall around that camp that he had put, his soldiers had put. And that became his Darul Khilafah, yeah, the capital city, which now we call the Siri Fort. So that Siri Fort sports complex, Siri Fort auditorium, all that area falls under that. Uh, there are other fortifications, minor fortifications, courtlas. For example, uh, if you look at the old maps, uh, Pilar has written a very beautiful book, Maps of Delhi. She has compiled maps uh, she collected from Delhi archives, national archives and various other places in these maps of Delhi. Uh, if you if you observe them closely, you will find that there are many icons, the icon that he, they use for a small fortification. Those icons you'll find at many places like in Tihar. So what now we know as Tihar jail somewhere around that we have Tihar jail and this village of Tihar is uh, said to be quite old, you know, older than the formal cities of Delhi. Some people say so uh, there is a fortification depicted over there. The Loni fort, uh, Loni right now is border of Delhi and Uttar Pradesh, one of the borders. So Shadra, we have the Loni border. Loni officially is part of Uttar Pradesh now, but in all old records during the British era, Loni fort is depicted in Delhi, one of the fortifications of Delhi. So Delhi also had small, small forts around it. On the Shadra side, we had the Loni fort. On uh, the other side, Towards West Delhi, we have the fort of Najafgarh. Najafgarh locality is still very famous. And Mirza Najaf Khan, who built that fort, who comes from the Royal Safi dynasty of uh, Iran. And when Nadir Shah attacked, he deposed his, uh, all the Safis from there. He arrested Nadir Shah and his entire, uh, uh, Najaf Khan and his uh, entire family. That's when an emissary from 
uh, Delhi went there on the orders of the Emperor of Delhi and he spoke to Nader Shah and uh, negotiated the release of Najaf Khan and his elder sister and the sister was then married to this emissary. They came back. He was associated with the family of Awadh. So Najaf Khan uh, came to Awadh, then he came to Delhi and then he rose to the power of, uh, you know, he became one of the most powerful generals in Mughal army after Aurangzeb. He introduced firelock musket, revived the total army and it is said that until he was alive, nobody dared to touch Delhi or even look towards Delhi. So the, a lot of attacks happened, six attacked, Rohila's attacked, har taraf se hamle ho rahe the, lekin Delhi ke andar koi nahi ghus paara tha and just to fortify Delhi, make it more stronger. He built small, small forts all around. Najafgad ka kila, uska apna kila, sirf ek gate bacha hai. Najaf Khan ki apni jo haveli hua karti thi is kile ke andar, us haveli ke andar uh, baad mein uh, this one Maratha uh, came and started living. Now interesting story here is that uh, this person was thrown away from his old Haveli in not actually thrown away also he he actually uh, refused to stay in uh, continue to stay in his old Haveli which was allocated to him by the British in Shah Jahanabad because this person was considered as a traitor he used to be uh, associated with Marathas and then he helped the British so everybody was uh, everybody considered him as a traitor and his Haveli became famous as Namak Haram Ki Haveli. So then what he did, he left that place, he came to Najafgarh, he started living in the palace of uh, Najaf Khan. And it is there when he died and when uh, things changed, this Haveli was converted into a police station. And much after independence, uh, the government decided they needed a better police station. So all that area was cleared and a multi-story building was constructed over there. But uh, whatever construction happened at that time, some ruins of that construction you can still see. Uh, for example, if you, uh, you know, roam around the police station, go behind the police station, one or two streets beyond, you'll see that uh, there are some small, uh, so certain walls that still survive, which are using that old Lahori brick. So Lahori brick means that this is the late Mughal era construction. So those buildings are still there. Those havelis are in very bad shape now. So um, we don't know whether uh, who's owning them and all, you know, one, one need to go and check in detail. I've never had a chance to uh, talk to people and go into that depth. However, uh, this uh, Munshi Bhavani Shankar, he is also credited the, the person that I just mentioned who was known as Namak Haram. So Munshi Bhavani Shankar uh, did some construction over there. He added some rooms, some uh, extended buildings associated. So this could be one of the buildings added by him, which still survives behind the police station. So of all the forts, there are certain forts which people don't know about and only a few traces remain. For example, in case of Najavgad, original fort ka sirf a gate bacha hua hai. And there are also certain forts which are in two different parts and people are still confused about them. Records are not very clear about them. For example, Adilabad and Naika Kot. Now, when we say Tughlaqabad, Tughlaqabad is the famous name. People know about Tughlaqabad, Bhad Bada Kila hai. Rather, one of the largest forts that Delhi has. So it was more fortified city and a citadel, separate area of army, a dozen baulis in there. A lot, you know, all kind of luxuries that you can expect. Everything was there. Uh, outside this fort, there was a huge lake and between that lake, there was an island on which uh, Ghyasuddin Tughlaq's tomb is situated right now. The lake is all dried up, obviously. And uh, on one side of the lake, we had on the on the eastern side, we have this uh, another hillhock where we have the fort of Adilabad. Now, I did my research on Adilabad. I wrote that chapter in my manuscript, the book that is about to be published. And then there is another fort right behind it, which people call Naika Court. So I was wondering, I was trying to do uh, trying to find some information about Naika Court. I checked so many old records. Uh, Malvi Zafar Hassan's listing is the oldest English listing that we are, you know, we, we have access to. 1910, uh, 1909, 19, 1910, he did his work. In that, uh, this fort is mentioned as Naika Court. Rather, in English, he writes as Barber's Fort or um, uh, 
he says either it's barber's fort or it's washerman's fort so dhobi ka kila so ye nai ka kila ya dhobi ka kila hai uh, kaun tha wo nai kaun tha wo dhobi kahi koi description nahi hai all he say right says that this is the dimension of the fort this is situated this these many yards to the east of this this construction this building that's it just the architectural values and nothing beyond that so it was not helping i picked up books like bashiruddin ahmed uh, sir sayed ahmed khan absolutely no information i mean naika fort washerman's fort barber's fort whatever name you want to use nothing of this sort is mentioned but interestingly when i was reading adilabad's uh, detail in these books i found out and in few other records i found out that in adilabad the last paragraph says that adilabad has an extension and this extension is used by the soldiers where they stay while the emperor is staying in the fort of adilabad so we have got the fort of tughlaqabad right opposite that we have the fort of adilabad and behind that we have the fort of naika kot which is uh, 300 400 meters away and it's both are situated on hill so if you have to walk from one fort to another you have to climb down the hill walk to the other one then climb up the hill and uh, i was i was looking at one of the blogs someone even wrote that there used to be a bridge between these two forts well we have found, not found any archaeological proof for that and we have also not found anything that uh, hints you no know, any document or any remains nothing that could hint uh, you know give a hint of a bridge between these two however the old urdu records be it waqiat e darul hukumat e delhi or asar us sanadid they say that the soldiers were staying in these in in the fort behind or in the rear fort so it's called as the rear fort the back side fort of adilabad ab time ke sath ye naam change kaise hua us pe bhi koi information available nahi hai hamare paas aur maze ki baat बहुत सारे बिल्डिंग्स हमारे पास ऐसी हैं विच आर नॉट सपोज टू बी फोर्ट बट दे आर कॉल्ड फोर्ट फॉर एग्जांपल द ओल्डेस्ट टूम ऑफ इंडिया द टूम ऑफ नसीरुद्दीन महमूद एंड वसंत कुंज द करेक्ट नेम इज सुल्तान घारी घार यू हैव टू प्रोनाउंस इट फ्रॉम द एपिक लॉटिस विच इज घार इज अ पर्शियन वर्ड स्टार्ट फ्रॉम घायन घार मीन्स अ केव एंड इन इंडिया वी वर नॉट एबल टू प्रोनाउंस Ghain properly, so what people made and when the British wrote that name, Sultan Ghari or the cave of Sultan became S U L T A N Sultan and G H A R I, which our people read as Gadi, because for Gadi also we use similar spelling. So Sultan Ghari became Sultan Gadi, and Gad in Hindi means a palace or a fort rather. It's so not a palace, a fort, a fortification. and since this one tomb also has bastions on four corners and it appears to be like a fort wall people started calling it the fort of the emperor sultan ki ghadi jabki sultan ki ghadi nahi sultan e hari hai so bahut baar namon ke sath you know when so many things are lost in translation yahan par bhi bahut sari gadbad ho jati hai so when you are uh, there to define a fort what exactly is a fort how do you categorize a certain building as a fort that becomes a very big question um other tomb fortification kotla isa khan niyazi isa khan ka jo kotla humayun's tomb complex mein hai kotla mubarakpur uh, then there are city walls or smaller village walls at chirag delhi ke aas pass ki jo diwar hua karti thi khareda ka maine mention kiya even when we talk about a fort wall or a wall like kila rai pithora so when prithviraj chauhan extended the fort of lal kot lal kot was already there he extended that wall lal kot was built by anang pal tomar so the oldest dynasty that we know uh, to rule over delhi though um, uh, if you want to go into mythology yes we have the names of pandavas after that we have also found evidence of samrat ashok because we have got ashokan rock edict east of kalash shrinivaspuri mein aur uske baad uh, the settlers jinke bare mein hamare paas written evidence hai written records hai we start with anang pal tomar who settled in delhi and he started this city which now we call or now we know by the name of mehroli for 444 years these people ruled the longest ruling dynasty over delhi and during this time uh, one of the kings anang pal the second built lal kot and in 11th century later his great great grandson uh, i mean ajmer is linked to delhi by marriage 
the daughter of one of the tomar kings was married to the king of ajmer and their son was uh, prithvira chauhan in one account they say no this was the grandson I'm not getting into that right now however when he realized that there is a threat from um, uh, the afghans so he decided to build a stronger fortification he, he decided to protect the people of delhi so he built a fort wall around it which the name that we have for that is even persian kila e rai pithora rai pithora being the name of uh, prithvira chauhan as old records have always mentioned him so ek kila usne yahan par bana diya tha jiske andar aake puri ki puri jo mamluk dynasty hai aur early khilji era jo hai that was all spent in this place iske andar bahut sari buildings hua karti thi all those buildings are now gone so we don't know ki uh, original buildings kahan kahan exactly thi ya unke bhi remains hame zyada nahi mile hai other than anang tal we don't know even uh, when you talk about the oldest wall surviving wall of delhi which is lal kot mehroli or jawalal nehru university ke beech mein sanjay van hai sanjay van ke andar you have the wall of lal kot lal kot ki wall ka jitna portion abhi bacha hua hai more than a kilometer is what survives today but dusri side pe ye kidhar ko join karta tha us par bahut conflict hai general cunningham kehte hain ki nahi ye bahut aage se aake ghum jata tha bagler keh rahe bagler Uh, jumped, uh, climbed up sort of, uh, and 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 he 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 saw some sort of of remains wall when went there and he did his uh, exercises and he found out ki se puri chal so he said लाल है अभी का जो संजय वन है उसके अंदर अंदर यानी कि योग माया टेम्पल के पीछे यही छोटा सा किला हुआ करता था बट उस केस में पूरा का पूरा मेहरौली शहर उसे बाहर आ जाता है anang tal which is the source of water usse bahar aa jata hai and bagler and general cunningham unka conflict yahi start ho gaya tha that how can a king build a fort and leave the source major source of water outside that's not possible so this wall must be something else or maybe a partition or something and there was a bigger wall around it and then prithviraj came and extended it further so uh, these kind of things are there in records and they have always been put, put forward as theories kiska uh, iske jo archaeological proof hai hamare paas bahut zyada depth mein har cheez ke nahi hai but it is always interesting to study these things and what is what fascinates me more is when lalkot existed the wall that closed lalkot that completed the first fort lalkot one portion of the wall no longer exists so all that stone was used elsewhere i don't know whether it was used in kila rai pithora or it was used later because we have got proper documentation that uh, the mamluks and later the khiljis they repaired these forts so they must have used that stone but what we know for sure is that after tughlaqabad the other cities that were established be it jahanpana of mohammed bin tughlaq or be it kotla firoz shahi the material from the older cities was used so today we do not have the wall of kila rai pithora properly only few traces are left one major reason for that is that when uh, future cities were being built material for this from this place was used for example in case of firosha kotla uh, what happened was uh, we have this mentioned in tarikh e firoz shahi and uh, shams shiraz afif talks about it he says that emperor issued an order that anyone who is coming from delhi to this new city so delhi being kotla firosha uh, uh, delhi being uh, uh, lal kot kila rai pithora mehroli that area so anyone who is coming from this side or even the siri fort area jahanpana area this whole belt anyone who is coming from this side to firosha kotla the new city that is being developed has to bring a cart load of stones and even if that person is walking he has to bring in some material and whenever traders from outside were coming all these traders were made to halt there their carriages were used they, whatever uh, vehicle they were bringing uh, the vehicles were used and they had to as a payment or as a tax as a entry octroi uh, the payment was that they have to make one trip to delhi and bring in whatever material they could so all the walls that were there previously were quickly dismantled everything came to Firozabad the city was established and uh, the stone was also there for Firosha Kotla now after Firozabad when Sher Shah Suri comes in and he starts building his uh, Shergarh or Delhi Sher Shahi he needed material so he dismantled Firozabad and he also uh, used leftover material from the previous cities we have got Jahanpana we have got Siri and all 
so material was brought from there they did not bother to query fresh stone once sher shah suri died and uh, islam shah suri came he also built this fort of salim gad so when we talk about twin forts you have got two twin forts in delhi one being adilabad and naika kot other being red fort and salim gad the only difference between these two forts is that adilabad naika kot were built by the same person as connected forts whereas uh, salim gad and uh, the red fort uh, were built 100 150 years apart so there is a gap of a century two dynasties one being suri dynasty salim shah suri or islam shah suri built it and uh, later humayun and akbar came and then uh, nuruddin jahangir came who renamed that fort as nura nurgad and after that it again became famous as salim gad so when red fort was planned a gate was kept towards salim gad and a small bridge of boats was constructed from where people can walk into salim gad and salim gad was always used as emperor's uh, retreat uh, recreational area later aurangzeb also used it as a prison he he imprisoned his own daughter over there so different way sometimes it was prison sometimes it was emperor's retreat when british came they removed that bridge of boats they sealed the salim gad darwaza they constructed a new darwaza at a uh, height and built two bridges one bridge for pedestrians and one bridge for uh, the railway so the railway track the first railway track that came actually goes right through salim gad and a railway station a temporary makeshift railway station was made inside salim gad because uh, king george the 5th when he came for his coronation darbar he uh, came via train from bombay and he got down at salim gad station from where a carriage brought him inside the red fort the palace so these kind of stories are there uh there are certain records associated with these forts which i have been trying to find for example uh, sir sayed ahmed khan mentions that he has witnessed with his own eyes the horoscope of red fort kila e muwalla as it was called back then ki kila e mubarak ya kila e muwalla ya lal kile ka jo horoscope hai वो उन्होंने अपनी आंखों से देखा जिसके अकॉर्डिंग जो डेट वगैरह है वो बताते हैं कि क्या इसकी डेट है बिकॉज ख्वाबगा में जो डेट लिखी हुई है वो उसको कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट करते हैं वहां पे जो डेट डेट लिखी हुई है हॉरोस्कोप के हिसाब से डेट अलग है सो so, वो हॉरोस्कोप कब से मैं ढूंढने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ एंड यू नो इफ एनी ऑफ आर व्यूअर्स हुर लिसनिंग राइट नाउ और हुर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो लेटर इफ यू हैव एनी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट इट प्लीज डू शेयर बिकॉज इन नेशनल आर्काइज आई नॉट बीन एबल टू फाइंड इट इन ब्रिटिश लाइब्रेरी ब्रिटिश रिकॉर्ड india office uh, london i have not been able to find that document anywhere so if there was a horoscope of red fort till late 1800s early 1900s there is a possibility that in some form or some copy must have survived according to those documents because such documents get referenced at multiple places and they also challenge uh, certain things for example how many people worked on red fort how many years did it take what was the exact cost british did some good work good research and red fort became one of the most documented forts that we have in delhi every single corner was documented in detail and yet there are so many mysteries associated with it for those of you who have been to red fort you must have crossed nawab khana well let me tell you nawab khana what you see right now is one of the gates of original nawab khana nawab khana used to have four gates so nawab khana actually was a complete enclosure and this one gate that we now call nawab khana has been mentioned as hatia pole in all old records i have not read any uh, record before 1910 which mentions this one gate as nawab khana they mention the entire enclosure so when you enter red fort you cross chatta bazar that there is the gate of chatta bazar and then there was a walled enclosure with a huge tank in the center and this tank was connected via water channel the channel still exists it's all dried up now and uh, in place of that tank we have a huge park right now and then there were gates on the sides because there was this northeast uh, 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 this east west road is it north south uh, yeah it should be north south actually the north south road which is from delhi gate or the akbarabadi gate to salim gad gate that road goes on which is still there all the barracks and museums are on that road uh there were two gates on that and then the fourth gate which now we call as nawab khana which was originally 
which is originally mentioned as hatia pole or hathi pole because elephants were tied so anyone who is coming to visit the emperor he would tie his elephant there or get off the elephant or horse over there and only uh, king or the princess are allowed to cross that gate mounted on horse or elephant or whatever they are using so uh, it was called hatia pole now sir sayyid ahmed khan says that it is called hatia pole because there were two elephants outside it and all other records said no elephants were not here elephants were outside delhi gate and later when lord curzon came and he brought back those elephants so there were elephants and one of the theory is that uh, emperor akbar constructed two elephants outside his palace wherever he was living and he had two mahavats sitting on those elephants which were jamal and patta the two rajput kings who told akbar that we will not marry our daughter to you you want to fight with us you can fight but we will not uh, a uh, you know get into this kind of marital agreement with you so they fought bravely and akbar uh, was not satisfied even after killing them so what he did he created two elephants and this is just a story that he created two elephants and with the mahavats as jamal and patta and they were standing out right outside his palace and i have read one or two records where they say that it is not possible because um, uh akbar being a muslim king he had no business constructing elephants well those people i think have not visited fatehpur sikri properly the elephants outside fatehpur sikri's hathi gate are still there on the back side when you go towards hira minar you see huge elephants really big elephants on that gate uh, from outside you can see them so yes he had some elephants and shah jahan brought them to delhi that's what the theory, story is and he got them installed at uh, akbarabadi or delhi gate and Aurangzeb was not big fan of this kind of work, so he got them removed, buried them, and later the British found these stone pieces. They reassembled those elephants. They placed them in Victoria Park, what is now Gandhi Park, and then uh, Lord Curzon decided to bring them back, restore them, and put them in their original position. But uh, the stones were not complete. The pieces were not proper. So those pieces, some of them, the Mahavats at least, were sent to the museum. Other pieces were lost. Some buried. and new elephants replicas of those were constructed and when you look at the old british era photographs from asi archives and when you look at the modern elephants minor differences can be noticed so they say that these mahavats that were there were sent to delhi museum which became uh, the mumtaz mahal museum of red fort and some of the artifacts were sent to national museum and other places also so during my research i also tried to trace these mahavats the jamal and patta because we have got photographs from british era and we have got all the records in uh, the the transfer of these mahavats to the museum and all uh, trying to trace them i was able to trace them to a point where they were transferred to the museum after that what happened to them we have no idea whether they were taken away during the british era they were taken away later absolutely no idea but those mahavats are not present here just a few months back just before this lockdown started this year only i got a call from one of my friends in uh, england because i've got uh, uh, some friends I'm, i i you know i pu keep pushing them to provide information find stuff for me and one of these guys was able to spot one of these mahavats somewhere uh, in one of the farm houses in england he said i've i've seen something like this he was not sure whether it is the exact same statue but when i showed him photograph he said it resembled quite like it so there is a possibility that it has it has reached one of the private properties in europe and maybe uh, he you know he mistook it for something else so not sure about it but one thing which bothers a lot bothers me a lot about red fort is red fort was actually one of the most precious forts that we had walls pillars they were gilded with gold uh for those who don't know um, about two or three decades back the government there was a debate in the parliament how about we restore red fort to its original glory so what they did the parliamentary committee said okay let's uh, do a little experiment in diwane khas the archaeological survey of india actually restored a small panel on a pillar and uh, they gilded it with pure gold the calculation was done 
and the government realized that it will be so expensive to bring this fort back to its original glory with all kind of precious and semi precious stones and gold on walls and pillars it will be insane so the idea was dropped but that one small panel is still there uh, it, it's it's on the inner side so people walking outside are not able to see it properly but these kind of stories when you go inside hammam now when you say hammam uh, all these palaces and forts they all had mostly all had hammams we often confuse hammam to be a ghusl khana ghusl khana means a bathing area hammam is not purely a ghusl khana it is much more than that it's at tabibul bakush it is friend of your health doctor of your health hammam is more closer to what we now call no as spa or sauna because in uh, uh, the hammam of delhi the red fort hammam that still survives we have got three areas three chambers each chamber is further divided into two parts so akba khana garam khana sard khana in in one in the first chamber emperor would come just take off his clothes go to garam khana where they had terracotta pipe laid all on the ground and there are marble slabs on it they would pour hot boiling water in the tank and it would run through all these pipes and the steam would come through these pores so between the two marble slabs the tiny gap that they had through that slit steam would come and the emperor would get proper steam bath the water would go into a tank hot water tub where he would get a hot water uh, bath there is a massage table there is a cold water tub and then there are two fountains in two different rooms one uh, documented as a sandal wood fountain one as rose water fountain uh in certain records it is also mentioned that there was a third fountain but i have not been able to find any third fountain or even trace of it because the way the layout is third fountain doesn't have a scope there is no space where the third fountain would have been but even sir sayed ahmed khan mentions a third that there are three fountains in that room the fountain still survive in their original shape so no idea however in the walls whatever inlay work was done there were stones there were semi precious stones many of them are gone what kind of windows they had back then they are gone a lot has changed um so the most documented or the most preserved fort the red fort even that has changed when the british took over after 1857 they removed so many buildings entire haram was removed the mosque and the market of the haram gardens of the haram they were all removed hayat baksh and mehtab bagh were originally removed later restored and only one garden that to two third of the garden was restored mehtab bagh is still being excavated trying to restore that garden slowly we are trying to bring some of these monuments back to their original glory but what was there originally since it has not been documented properly in most of the cases all we can do is bring forward our speculations how exactly it appeared it can only be a guess for example in case of mohammed bin tughlaq we say and even in case of khilji we say that they used to sit in a palace of 1000 pillars kasre hazar sutun so inside the fort the palace that they had was kasre hazar sutun the palace of 1000 pillars the vijay mandal of uh, sarpre vihar today is known as that same palace of 1000 pillars though hardly 14 or 15 uh, pillar survive but if you look closely you will see that there are bases on which there would have been wooden pillars so 1000 would be more of a figurative term कि हाँ हजार के करीब हजारों खंबे हैं यहाँ पर होंगे शायद सौ दो सौ खंबे लकड़ी के खंबे होंगे कुछ पत्थर के खंबे होंगे उसके ऊपर एक बहुत बड़ा शामियाना एक टेंट लगा हुआ होता था उसके रेफरेंसेस हैं हमारे पास लेकिन इससे ज्यादा डिटेल हमें बहुत ज्यादा फोर्ट्स की और पैलेसेस की नहीं मिल पा रही है पर इवन दीज बिल्डिंग टेकन फॉर ग्रांटेड वेन आई डिड माई फर्स्ट बुक ऑन बाउलिस आई थॉट मैं चार छह महीने में कर लूंगा बाउलिस तो सारी याद है पांच साल दो साल तीन साल हो गए थे मुझे रिसर्च करते हुए दिल्ली के ऊपर ढूंढते हुए बट वेन आई प्रॉपरली स्टार्टेड राइटिंग ऑन बाउलिस फ्रॉम दैट डे इट टुक मी फाइव इयर्स टू कंप्लीट माय फर्स्ट बुक एंड फॉर और साथ साथ में फोर्ट्स और बाउलिस दोनों साथ साथ पढ़ रहा था तो पांच साल उसको हो गए और आप दो साल और एड कर सकते हैं फोर्ट्स के लिए लास्ट सेवन ईयर्स आई एम डूइंग माई रिसर्च इन्फॉर्मेशन बिट्स एंड पीसेज में अवेलेबल है एंड देर इज सो मच एम्बिग्विटी हिस्टोरियंस आर कॉन्ट्रेडिक्टिंग ईच अदर टू अ लेवल द ओल्डेस्ट fort or fortification that finds mention in mythological records i would say is the fort of indraprastha though it's uh, very difficult from the archaeological point of view to tell where it was but the common belief is ki ha jahan par abhi 
पुराना किला है वहीं पर जो शेरगढ़ जो शेरशाह सूर्य ने बनाया उसी जगह पर इंद्रप्रस्थ का किला हुआ करता था अब इस नाम के पीछे इतनी कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन है सर सैयद अहमद खान कहते हैं कि देवताओं का राजा इंद्र इस जगह का मालिक था और किसी फर्शी जमाने में आकर उसने यहां पर अशरफियां बांटी थी तो इस जगह का नाम इंद्रप्रस्थ हो गया अब यह कहानी और कहीं हमें नहीं मिलती सर सैयद को ये किसने बताई हमें नहीं पता और इस तरह जब बशीरुद्दीन अहमद तक आते हैं तो वो कुछ और अलग कहानी बताते हैं वो पांडवों के साथ प्योरली एसोसिएट करके वहीं से स्टार्ट करते हैं वो इंद्र का कोई जिक्र ही नहीं करते जनरल कनिंगम या इनके रिकॉर्ड जब हम पढ़ते हैं तो ये भी इंद्रप्रस्थ की बात करते हैं बट देन दे ऑल्सो से देर यूज टू बी समिंग एंड द लोकल फोकलोर इज कि यहीं कहीं वो रहा करते थे और इंद्रपथ उस समय से चला आ रहा है क्लॉडियस टॉलमी जिसने पहला नक्शा बनाया उसने परगना इंद्रपथ उसने उसका जिक्र किया है सो द नेम हैज बीन देयर एंड प्रोबेबली इट इज सेम प्लेस दैट वी हैव ऑलवेज मेंशन बट उसको महाभारत से कनेक्ट करना बहुत मुश्किल है आर्कियोलॉजिकली माइथोलॉजिकली या अपने बिलीफ के साथ आप चलना चाहते हैं तो देन एवरीथिंग इज पॉसिबल सो ओके बाय द वे आई हैव बीन आई हैव बीन कंटीन्यूअसली टॉकिंग 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 इफ यू गाइस हैव एनी क्वेश्चन any comment please feel free to uh, type in the comment section i would love to answer and i've all, already reached uh, the time that i was allocated i'm all, i'm almost there so i would love to answer any questions if there are any uh, otherwise i'll 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 continue i can mention few more interesting anecdotes jaise uh, salimgarh ke bare mein hum baat kar sakte hain ki salimgarh ko kai baar prison banaya gaya hai angrezon ke time pe jab wo aakhri baar prison bana to us samay wahan par teen इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी के जो ब्रिज जनरल्स थे उनको रखा गया था सैगल ढिल्लो शाहनवाज और इस दौर में एक नारा भी बुलंद हुआ था कि लाल किले से उठी आवाज सहगल ढिल्लो शाहनवाज तो शाहनवाज खान गुरबक सिंह ढिल्लो और प्रेम सहगल जी इनको लाल किले की बावली में रखा गया था और क्या किया गया था कि बावली के अंदर उतर के जो साइड में जो आर्चिस बनी हुई थी बावली भी बाई द वे इज वेरी ओल्ड बावली इज एटलीस्ट थ्री सेंचुरी ओल्डर देन रेड फोर्ट एंड वेन रेड फोर्ट वॉज प्लान तो बावली को बीच में प्लान कर लिया गया था तुगलक के जमाने की एल शेप बावली है बाद में ऑब्वियसली मुगलों ने लोधीज ने बाद में फिर मुगलों ने इसको रिपेयर किया है तो अभी जो आप स्ट्रक्चर देख रहे हो वो बाद के पीरियड का है बट द सेम थिंग वॉज यूज जस्ट रिपेयर सो अंदर की जो आर्चिस थी उनमें दीवारें करके प्रॉपरली कमरा बनाया किचन बनाई टॉयलेट बनाया और इन तीनों जनरल्स को वहां रखा गया इस दौरान भारत आजाद हो गया और फिर उसके बाद ऑब्वियसली इनको छोड़ दिया गया तो सलीमगढ़ में जहां पर इनके लिए एक टेम्परेरी जेल बनाई गई थी पहले यहां रखा गया फिर वहां जेल और कोर्ट रूम बना के वहां इनको शिफ्ट किया गया था तो इनका जो ट्रायल होता था जो रेड फोर्ट ट्रायल है उसके लिए इनको बैरक्स में लाया जाता था ब्रिज के थ्रू ही सो वहां पर उनका सामान फिर बाद में उसको म्यूजियम में कन्वर्ट कर दिया गया अभी क्योंकि सलीमगढ़ में रिस्टोरेशन चल रही है तो करीब एक साल से वो पूरा एरिया बंद कर दिया गया है बट सच अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस वेन यू गो देर एन सी की कैसा पूरा होता था जेल में जब आप अंदर एंटर करते हैं सलीमगढ़ किले के अंदर जो इन तीन सोल्जर्स के लिए जो जेल बनाई गई थी तो अंदर जाके आप एक्सपीरियंस कर पाते हैं कि उस टाइम कितने किस तरह की कंडीशन में इनको रखा जाता था उसके बिल्कुल बाहर बैरक्स हैं। आप बैरक्स को देखेंगे उनमें फायर प्लेस बनी हुई है और बहुत ही बढ़िया तरीके से छत दीवारें क्या बढ़िया तरीके से अंग्रेजों ने बनाई है जब जेल की बात करते हैं तो कितनी खराब हालत में इतनी छोटी छोटी विंडोज कॉमन जो टॉयलेट पीछे बना हुआ है आज भी ऐसा लगता है कि अगर अभी भी आप उसको बिल्कुल अच्छे से वेल मेंटेन कर दो तब भी हम उसका इस्तेमाल ना करें सो so, कैदियों को वाकई बुरी कंडीशन में रखा जाता था वो चीजें वहां देखने को मिलती हैं। खैर अंग्रेजों ने फिर भी बहुत अच्छे से रख लिया जो तुगलक के टाइम पे हुआ जैसे कैदियों को तब रखा गया था जिस लेक का मैंने जिक्र किया था कि एक लेक हुआ करती थी बिल्कुल सामने तुगलकाबाद के सूख गई डैम बचा हुआ जो डैम बनाया था मोहम्मद बिन तुगल ने उसे कंट्रोल करने के लिए और लेक के आए बीच में जो आइलैंड था उस पर जो उसका टूम बना हुआ है दारुल अमन वो एग्जिस्ट करता है उसकी जो बेसमेंट है बेसमेंट में जेल हुआ करती थी अभी भी अगर आप कभी तुगलक के टूम पर जाएं तो आप देखेंगे एक साइड पे छोटा सा सर्कल एनक्लोजर टाइप है जिसमें ऊपर दो होल्स बने जमीन पे दो होल है नीचे झाकेंगे नीचे बड़े बड़े कमरे हैं तो इन होल से खाना पीना दे दिया जाता था और होल से जितनी थोड़ी सी लाइट अंदर पहुंच जाए पहुंच जाए कैदियों को यहाँ रखा जाता था तो उस समय क्या तो खैर हमारे पास इस तरह के बहुत सारे एग्जांपल्स हैं बहरहाल दिल्ली की जब बात करते हैं हजारों मॉन्यूमेंट्स हैं जिनमें से दर्जनों किले हैं अगेन डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हाट डेफिनेशन यू टेक दिल्ली पर बात करते करते घंटों क्या दिनों तक बात की जा सकती है ये बातें खत्म नहीं होंगी 
मेरा वक्त खत्म होता जा रहा है आ, मैं आप लोगों से इजाजत चाहूंगा आप लोगों का शुक्रिया कहना चाहूंगा साथ जुड़ने के लिए और कारवा का शुक्रिया मुझे ये मौका देने के लिए मेरे थॉट्स मैं शेयर कर पाया उसके लिए तो आज के लिए अभी के लिए मुझे दीजिए इजाजत धन्यवाद थैंक यू विक्रम जीत भाई फॉर टेकिंग आउट योर इन प्रेशियस टाइम फ्रॉम योर बिजी स्केड्यूल यू हैव बीन वेरी यू हैव बीन कीपिंग योरसेल्फ वेरी बिजी इन द पेंडेमिक इंटरैक्टिंग विद स्टूडेंट्स ऑल अक्रॉस द नेशन एंड वी होप टू सी योर बुक वेरी सून इन द मार्केट एंड वी ऑलरेडी हैव गॉट योर बुक ऑन बाउल इज नाउ वी आर वेटिंग फॉर द बुक ऑन द फोर्स ऑफ दिल्ली some some people are asking that is the book available on amazon yes it is available on amazon uh, the bowlies book is, the bowlies book this is available on amazon or uh, fourth book is yet to abhi meri manuscript so i work on a three draft policy maine pehla draft likh liya hai kept aside now i'm rewriting it that will be my second draft after that i'll do the third draft draft So, काफी स्पीड से काम चल रहा है आने वाले कुछ महीनों में मेरी ड्राफ्टिंग कंप्लीट हो जाएगी एंड देन आई सेंड द मैन्युस्क्रिप्ट पे पब्लिशर फॉर एडिटिंग या सो आई मेट आस्क यू वन और टू क्वेश्चंस टू एंड सेशन सो डू यू थिंक दिस बुक कैन हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स टू मेक देम इंटरेस्टेड इन हेरिटेज बिकॉज़ द द फ्यूचर जनरेशन इज यू नो आई थिंक लैक्स इन दैट एंथुसियाज्म फॉर हेरिटेज एज दे शुड um ishan before that i would uh, i think the first question that we need to address is do they need to know about heritage because unless they understand the importance of heritage books or no books it won't make a difference i mean i can come here i can tell you a very juicy and interesting story about an emperor ki wo aaya usne aise phool diya rajkumari haske boli kisi ko pasand aayegi kisi ko nahi aayegi akbar aaya usne kitno ko mara kab mara आज की जनरेशन को फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा है उन्हें किस चीज से फर्क पड़ रहा है उनके लिए क्या इंपॉर्टेंट है पहले वो देखा जाए वट इज दैट दे कैन लर्न फ्रॉम दिस एंड हाउ दे फील कनेक्टेड टू देयर हेरिटेज वंस वी आंसर दैट देन वी कैन डिसाइड वट मीडियम वी हैव टू यूज बिकॉज फॉर एवरी पर्सन यू कैन नॉट यूज द सेम मीडियम दीज बुक्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट नॉट फॉर एवरी वन बिकॉज आई नो मेनी पीपल पर्सनली हु आर नॉट एबल टू कनेक्ट थ्रू बुक्स i have been teaching through poetry i have been teaching through because those heritage clubs that i set up in schools and wherever i go for my teacher training workshops i i have seen even the teachers that i train sometimes they feel disconnected social science teachers unhe history pasand nahi hoti mujhe aise bhi example mil gaye it is only because they have been given certain books which were too academic in nature so ishan when you say can books help yes definitely but what kind of book and what kind of content are you presenting to that person that's what makes the difference yes thank you so much vikram bhai for taking out your time and thank you so much everyone who joined us live the video will be available on the youtube channel so don't forget to subscribe to it and like the video thank you so much